two of us went to high school of art and design in Manhattan, and we both lived in Brooklyn, and we commuted on a bus every single day, and we would wait at the same exact bus stop. See each other, but we didn't know each other. We wouldn't talk to each we other. We both wore like Metallica shirts, and I had long hair. MC and, jackets, yeah, boots. For six months, yeah. every day. Stand at the bus stop like this. Not, not even a lot. Not even a lot. And then we both transferred to the local Brooklyn High School. The other school, Art Design, had some problems, and and uh, I was feeling it, and he must have been feeling it. Yeah, absolutely. So then we're in our class in the new school, and I'm sitting there, and I'm like, that's that dude from the bus stop. Yeah. So I don't know if I went over to you, you came over to me, but... All I remember about him is that he had, like, this curly devil lock <laughs> bouncing around in his face with like a hand-painted Misfits <laughs> jacket. White, white jacket or something. And I was like, oh yeah, that's that guy from the bus stop. And we hit it off. The teacher hated him. Yeah. <laughs> Zambella, stop talking. <laughs> we were immediately friends and uh, I turned him on to uh, my friend, the Biohazard. Yep. I had grown up right across the street from heaven from Biohazard uh, as a kid. Uh, literally, he would babysit me. He's a couple years older than me. And our families were closed. And um, it was before they were signed. And I had the Biohazard demo. And I played it for Joe. Played it for me. And I loved, loved it. it. And I loved it. It's like, uh, it's like my favorite new band. And so I, I brought him to the rehearsal studio. Yeah. To meet he, all the guys. Yeah. And, he, and I, I met all the Biohazard guys. And I became one of their guitar tech. We drew, drew a lot of influence from Biohazard back then. Like, it, they were kind of showed us how they would book their gigs, right? Would you yeah, say? we learned a lot. We learned a lot from them. There right? was a, a scene growing in Brooklyn at Lemoore's. Joe and, and Mina had a band called Isolated Fear. Yeah, um, and, and you jammed across the street in another garage. Right. And Mina and I were jamming with this, our first drummer, Kenny Peterson. Right. And uh, I remember the day, it was summer, I think. It was uh, one month. Mm -hmm. And uh, Alan comes across the street and goes, how many songs do you guys have? And I was like, we got three. And he goes, I only got one song. He goes, can I join your band? <laughs> so Alan came on board. We were thinking of names. Um, I always had these crazy dreams that either very visual, um, even for the album cover ideas yeah, and stuff. The symbol. Right, the symbol too. And I had this dream of uh, looking at a tile bathroom floor with all these paper, newspaper type uh, headlines falling on the floor and I saw the, the words like Vagia on, on a piece of paper. In his dream. And, uh, and he called me the next day. He's like, I got a great name for the band. You're going to love it. Life of Bagony. I'm like, sold. <laughs> but before that, for one week, we were called Capital Punishment. Yeah. And the we, guy in electric chair. <laughs> um, yeah. We actually spray painted t-shirts with a stencil. And gave them to Mina yeah. and Kenny, and they didn't want to wear them because they smelled like spray paint. <laughs> but then we became like Vagity yeah. and history, uh, and it's, it just started going, man.